So you've decided to get a Presa Canario, but you don't know how to pick a good one. Well, hopefully I can answer some questions for you today, and that's coming right up. How's it going, friends? This is Jason Baum, president of the Presa Canario Club of America, the official breed club of this part of the world. I am the AKC judge and the U.S. delegate for the Presa Canario Club of Spain. And I have a very important question to talk to you about today. And that is, how do you pick a great Presa Canario for yourself, for your family, for your home? This is a very confusing topic. Honestly, I have thought about this many times thinking, how can someone make the decision? Because if you look on the internet or on social media, wherever, you're going to see every dog is perfect. Every dog is exactly right. Every dog is the correct dog. And how, and how can you tell? So you call up. You call up some breeders, perhaps, and you ask them, is your dog the best? Is it uh, top quality? They're going to say yes. So you're, you're in the same state of confusion in which you started. So how can you make a choice like this? How can you, can you see the truth from, from what's being presented? Well, I have a, just a few uh, ideas for you, and I'm sure there could be more things that could be added to from this list. Number one, uh, don't consider just the price. And I'm thinking, yeah, that's, that's easy for you to say because maybe you have a lot of money, but we don't have a lot of money, you would be saying. Well, if you think about it, uh, I made my first decision based on um, money and I, that dog was around with me for 12 years. Uh, six months in to purchasing that dog, it got Parvo. I ended up spending $1,800 just to get her cured. So I, was, I spent the money whether I wanted to or not. And it's more, it, as I thought about this and I thought about where I would be in 10 years from now or 12 years from now when that dog finally passes on it's a very even though there's a perhaps a large upfront cost it's going to be worth it to get what you want uh, I love uh, the, the coach Lou Holtz he was a famous football coach uh, and he he had a saying which was if you settle for second best when first is available, you'll do it the rest of your life. So I've kind of taken that to heart with, with dogs and with the Presa Canario. I don't just look for a good deal. I don't just make a quick decision. I work my hardest to try to find what is best and settle for first place only, which is not settling at all. Number, number two, results. Now everyone says they're the best and they have great stock and everything like that, but do they have any proof of that? So proof of a, of a dog being of perfect confirmation that fits the standard, it, we have a very, luckily we have a very good way to, to judge that and that is a dog that participates in dog shows. Dog shows are not a place just to go show off the beauty of a dog that has nothing to do with it actually the we have very skilled individuals who are knowledgeable about the breed who are using their best knowledge their best skills their their analytical abilities to say whether that dog is or is not a great representation of that breed and whether it has good health and whether it has 
uh, uh, at least apparently, and, and whether that dog also has good structure, good movement, all of those things put together. The, if, the, if the person has no way to state whether their dogs have participated in a dog show, if they've never done it themselves, perhaps they answer, oh, I'm not about shows. I'm about something else, maybe working or something like that. Just, that's a red flag. And you need to keep in mind that even though um, some of the people who are um, most involved in working are also very involved in showing because they want to make sure that the dog that they have is a good representation of the breed. Now, what about you getting a, going a little bit further into showing? You need to look at under which judge, what type of judge that dog was determined to have great, to be a great representative for the breed. The gold standard are the judges that are have been selected and named as expert judges by the Presa Canario Club of Spain. That is, those guys are, are the originators of the breed. They know exactly what they want. And if they say it is a good example, and it's an excellent example actually, then it really is. The Presa Canario Club of America has an extensive judge training and certification program. That is also another good way to go. Um, there's also judges from other organizations, the IABCA, UKC, and so forth. A lot of those folks, some of those folks may have a little bit of experience judging the Presa Canario. Uh, but in other cases, they're judging a dog and they don't know if it applies exactly to the standard. They don't know if it com complies with, with the, all the things in the standard, but they're doing the best job they can. At least that is an attempt. And I, I think that's better than nothing. The uh, working dogs, people say, hey, I have a working dog. So how do you know that? Um, that one is, I would also ask for results. Say, okay, it's a working dog. Do you have any titles? Have you done any certifications? What competitions has this dog been involved in that are, that are working? That were you uh, under a controlled environment where you had to, to, to send the dog, that you had to have the dog out properly? Things of that nature. If the person suddenly uh, cannot come up with ideas of exactly how they've been working the dog more than just like, okay, just go ahead and watch it bark at the fence, that may be a case where the dog may not be as much of a working dog as they're claiming. Health. Uh, we, you also have to look at the health of the dog. Uh, ask the breeder what kind of guarantee do they have? How long is it? Um, is it basically as soon as you buy the dog, you're, you're on your own? Or do they have one year, two year, three year guarantee of health and of what kind of health? And um, do they do pen hip or OFA type testing on their dogs? These are things that you could ask that would be very indicative of whether they're really serious. Next, pedigree. Uh, if the, this dog originates from the Canary Islands, if the, the breed, the breeding, the parents, the grandparents, the great grandparents, if they're not really from the Canary Islands, that may be a red flag. I once was looking to get a Presa Canario from someone or I was asking about their, I actually wasn't looking to get one. However, I was asking where their dogs came from, and they said, if you need to know that, you need to go somewhere else. And I, I think that's an honest answer. And I would, I would hope that you would be interested also in the pedigree of the dog. Next, the registration. A lot of the dogs, at least in the United States, 
have lost their international registration. The international registration is the ones recognized by the, the FCI, which is, stands for the Federation of Canine International, basically. Uh, that is an organization in Europe and Belgium. Uh, if the dog has FCI paperwork, which is managed in the United States, at least, by the FCPR, then that dog still remains with its international pedigree, this international registration. However, if, if it has lost that pedigree, people have tried to uh, compensate. For example, um, we have, the UKC is a great organization. It's, uh, we have done several preliminary, preliminary events for the AKC as well, and we, we support them. However, it was kind of founded as an alternative to the main registration in the United States, which is the American Kennel Club, the AKC. If the dog has a UKC paperwork, it's great to have something, but just know that it's not exactly what you may want if that's something that's important to you. Um, there's even lesser things. For example, there's breed clubs or, or things like that that offer registration. Those uh, are better than nothing, I suppose, um, but it is, it is not something that's transferable to the FCI that's something that's transferable where, you, where as long as, for example, if you bring a dog from Europe, and you can immediately register it in the AKC. If you bring a dog from the AKC, you can immediately register it to an FCI nation. Uh, there's 86 countries that are belong to the FCI in their registrations. So keep that in mind. Next. Um, the experience of the breeder. Uh, I would just ask them about their experience. What are, what are they about? Do, does it seem like they've been in, the, in this thing for a long time? The, ask them specifically about the breeding that you are looking into. Why this father and this mother? Was the answer, well, we have those two dogs and that's who we bred. That's probably not a good answer. But if they have, if their answer is, well, there was a little bit of weakness in this area of this dog, and so I picked this dog in order to strengthen that. However, the personality of the temperament of this dog was, uh, was ex super excellent, and I wanted to reinforce that by finding a male or whatever that would go along with that. Those are very good answers. Someone who's put a lot of thought and effort into this breeding. You don't want to just get a, any old dog that's just born in someone's yard. You want to get something that has been created and designed and picked specifically for to become the, a very, very good example of the breed. Now, if uh, another thing you can ask breeders is, how many dogs they're keeping or what they're thinking about in the breed. Oftentimes breeders honestly are just breeding for themselves. Ones that are reputable, ones that are, are not just in it to try to make money. They're, they're looking to create something that they can't get otherwise. And so if they are talking about how they are going to have the first pick and they're gonna have a, a male or a female or whatever they're trying to do, that's actually a good sign. Now, as far as picks, I wouldn't get too concerned about that and say, well, I missed out on the first or the second pick on this breeding. Well, one of the, the, the top winners in history in the United States, by far the biggest winner, was actually the last pick dog. So don't get too concerned with the pick However, it would be good to get something that's from a reputable breeder that has, that has good results, that has showing results, 
that has perhaps working results if that's what you're interested in. And, and don't get too worried about the price. You're gonna, it's often the, the term, you get what you pay for. And for, for a dog, a member of your family, you want to get the very best. So thanks a lot, friends, and thanks for watching.